Hey everybody, here today in this video we're going to be talking about literal equations. Okay, I don't know why they're called that, but um, you see, we literal equations are equations that contain more than one type of variable, okay? And it's learning how to solve these, okay? So we're going to get there. We're going to uh, get there with these. I'm going to show you, just kind of introduce it to you first using some simpler uh, e equations that we can solve. I know literal equations are, are really difficult for some kids and, and yeah, look at them. They're, they're tougher. They have more than one variable and they're a little bit more abstract um, and we're not going to get like a real nice and neat answer, and, but that's okay. Um, again, just, just listen to my explanation here and, and hopefully by the end of it here, you can kind of grasp what it is we're doing. This first example here, I just have solve for x, 2x equals 8. Again, that, that, this, an, this isn't a literal equation. It's got um, just one variable and should be super easy for you guys at this point, right? 2x equals 8. If I'm solving that for x, I would just undo the multiplication that's here, right? 2 times x equals 8. So I divide by 2 from both sides. And so x is going to equal 8 divided by 2 is 4. Okay, so I find my x solution, x answer is 4, right? Awesome. But a literal equation, what's different is that, again, like I said, it contains two different uh, or, or sometimes multiple different uh, variables to it. Okay, so look at the difference. This said 2 times x equals 8. This said 2 times x equals y, right? So it's two unknown amounts and two different unknown amounts, right? x and y, okay? But the goal here is still the same. It says solve for x, which means I want to get x by itself. I want to have my answer be x equals something, okay? In a normal equation um, with just one variable, I'm able to say the value of x is this number, okay? But when I do a literal equation like these with more than one variable, I'm not going to find the exact value of x, and that's okay. That's not necessarily even what it's asking. It's not saying find the value of x. It's saying solve for x, which means just solve this equation so that the x variable is by itself. Okay, so that's your big goal. And I, I, I know that's weird. Um, so be okay with, like, the answer here is not just going to be a simple number. And I'll explain why that is. Um, but, yeah, it's okay that these are going to be a little bit messier than uh, our, our other equations that we've solved, okay? So I look at this, 2x equals y. And the, again, the goal is still the same, and how we go about solving this is still the same, okay? I want to get x by itself, okay? And how do I do that? Well, I do that the same exact way, right? Over here with the x is a times 2, right? It's being multiplied by 2. So I cancel that the same way I did up here. I cancel that by dividing by 2 from both sides, okay? And again, with a literal equation, all, this, all the same rules still apply with you have to do the same thing to both sides. But just look what's going to happen, right? I divided by 2, and so this side has x by itself, which is good. That's what I want, okay? But this right side, look, y divided by 2, okay? Up here, it was just 8 divided by 2, a number divided by a number. And so I was able to divide those and simplify it to 4, okay? But here it's an, another unknown amount, this y divided by 2, okay? And so you can't like distinctively say, yes, this divided by 2 equals this number because we don't know what y is, right? We don't know what this amount is either, okay? And so we're not able to simplify this like we were up here, okay? So look how I'm going to write this. I'm going to say just x equals y divided by 2, okay? Because I, I'm not able to do division here. I'm not able, I'm not able to perform that because this is unknown. This is an unknown number. Okay. With these, you kind of ask yourself, okay, when am I done? How do I know that I'm done? You know that you're done when the variable that you're solving for is by itself. And it is here, right? There's nothing over here with the x. X is now by itself on that side. So I'm actually done. I'm done with my problem. And so my answer is x equals y divided by 2. And you might feel like, what? How are, you, how are you done there? There's so much like left that looks incomplete. And yeah, again, that's, that's why literal equations are kind of weird um, because we're still leaving it in terms of these unknown amounts, okay? Um, 
but it's it's fine. You did what it asked. It said solve for x. You got x by itself. And even though there's still these unknown values kind of still within this, it's okay. You did the problem. That's all it's asking. Okay. So that's the big goal with literal equations is you want to get the variable it's asking for all by itself. And the answer is almost always going to be pretty messy over here. Like it's not just going to be a, a single number, but that's okay. All right. So if that makes sense, we're going to try these. And notice numbers one and number two are the exact same equation. Okay. 3x plus y equals 10. 3x plus y equals 10. But I'm going to show you what I mean here. We're, go we're going to get these different variables by itself because that's what it's asking us to do. Okay. So number one says solve for y. Okay. Solve for y, that, that unknown value. Okay. So that means my job here is to get my answer to be y equals something, right? And so that's my big goal. I want to locate the y and get that by itself, okay? And so how do I get that by itself? Well, that means I need to, whatever side the y is on, I need to cancel whatever, whatever other terms are over there with it, okay? And so over here with the y is this 3x. And again, with these, I said in previous videos that it's all about how it's connected to the, the other terms, how they're connected to the variable you want to solve for, right? And so here it says 3x plus y. So it's connected with addition, okay? It's not being multiplied or divided. It's connected with addition. So that means I look at this, and I'm either going to need to add or subtract it based on whether it's positive or negative. And it's positive 3x, and so I need to minus 3x to cancel that, right? We've said that before too. 3x minus 3x is just 0x, and that means that is canceled, okay? But then look what happens over here. Again, the rule of algebra says I, what I do to one side, I have to do the exact same thing to the other side because it's an equation, right? An equation is the two sides are equal to each other. They're in balance. And if I subtract something from one side without doing it to the other side, they're no longer in balance. It's no longer an equation. So this is what I have to do to keep it in balance, okay? But look, and this is a really common thing to do. Look, here's the common mistake. 10 minus 3x equals 7x. No, don't do that. That is not true. Why? Because 10 minus 3x, if this was 10x minus 3x, it would be 7x. That's true, okay? But 10, just a constant of 10 minus 3x does not equal 7x, okay? These are two different types of terms, okay? This would be like saying 10 apples minus three oranges. And you think about that and it's like, well, you can't really combine those. That doesn't really mean anything. And that's the same thing here. 10 minus three X, they're not the same type of term. So you can't combine them to make it any simpler. So you have to leave them separate. It's just 10 minus three X, okay? We cannot combine those. And that takes some getting used to. That's the trickiest part with these, okay? But again, your big goal of these is get the variable that it's asking for by itself. And when you've done that, you're all done. And look, all that's over here is just plus y or positive y. And I don't even need to write the plus, so it's just y, right? And so once this is by itself, I have y equals whatever, I'm done. No matter how ugly it is over here, okay? And so I am done because y is by itself. There's no other numbers or terms over here, okay? So I would write my answer as y equals 10 minus 3x. That is it, okay? Once the variable it's asking for is by itself, you're done, okay? Even if it's an ugly answer, okay? Now let's look at the same thing, but let's solve this for x this time, okay? So again, different mindset here. You're thinking, okay, last time we got the y by itself, so I wanted to cancel out everything else other than the y. Okay, and that was that only took one step. But here, look, I want to get the x by itself. So that's kind of what I'm pinpointing on is, okay, that's the x I want by itself, and I want my answer to be x equals whatever this time. Okay, and it's going to be a little trickier. Okay, so again, just consider the set, like, if this was a normal equation, like if this was just a number, right? If this was, say, 7, I would minus 7 from both sides and, and go from there, right? And I, I, I carry out the steps the same way, in the same order, okay? So this plus y is going to be what I cancel out first because I want to get this x by itself. 
So I need to minus that from both sides to cancel out the addition, right? So I minus y from that side, and I minus y from here, and 10 minus y. Again, the common thing to do is think 10y minus 1y is 9y. And again, a lot of kids will write that, but these are not the same type of term either. We can't combine these to make it any simpler. So I just have to leave it as 3x equals 10 minus y. I cannot combine these or simplify these at all because they're not the same type of term. Okay? And then you look here. X isn't quite by itself yet. It doesn't say x equals whatever. It says 3x. Okay, so I'm not quite done. I have one more thing left. Okay, and it's just like the other problems we did where it's 3 times x, so we cancel out the 3 by dividing. Okay, so you divide both sides by 3. Okay, you do it there and it cancels real nice. But over here, look at this. It says 10 minus y. There's more than one term over there now, right? And so we haven't really dealt with this. And so the rule is when you are multiplying or dividing something and there's there's more than one of that thing, you have to divide or multiply everything by that. Think like proportions, right? With proportions, when we cross multiplied and there was a group on the one fraction, we distributed that to both terms. And the same goes for division. You have to divide everything by that, by that term you're dividing by. So I'm going to divide everything, the 10 and the minus y by 3. Basically, it's one big fraction, okay? And so look how ugly that is. And again, in math, usually we avoid the ugly things like fractions. But again, just can, like the whole time you have to keep in mind, my goal is to get x by itself. And once I do that, I'm done. Okay. And here, x, solve for x. And I did that. x is now by itself. Awesome. Okay. So 10 minus y over 3. Again, I can't simplify that at all. Okay. Because... This y up here kind of prevents that from being divided by 3, okay? So I'm done. x is by itself. I'm done, okay? So 10 minus y over 3 is as simply as I can write that, okay? So that's it. Again, it's, it's, it's tricky. It's, it's a tricky concept, um, but I hope that even made a little bit of sense to you. Um, I'm going to put up another video where I work through some more examples of problems like this. Uh, but good job. Thanks for following me here.